Hello everyone. Hope you're having a great Thursday, even though it's a good day for ducks outside. Uh, kind of wet and all out there, but uh, we'll make it. At least the, the, the heat has broken and uh, it's pretty cool, so we're thankful for that. Well, we are uh, in the last section of our Romans uh, Bible study. We've been in this for, for quite a while now, and uh, this is the last part of it. We handle uh, all of Romans chapter 16 together. It's 27 verses, and so we want to get to it. I encourage you to read it and study it a little bit. There's some good stuff in here, even though it's uh, it's mainly just kind of letter stuff. It's it's greetings and, and that kind of thing, and uh, but but there's still some good things in here that we, we ought to pay attention to. So let's walk through it. I'll move pretty quickly through some of these names and things. Uh, forgive me if I mispronounce them. I'll do my best, but, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's a, in some ways it's a hard list to read, but we'll do our best. So Romans chapter 16, starting with verse 1, and it says this, I commend to your sister Phoebe, a deacon of the church of, of Sincrea, uh, I ask you to receive her in the Lord in a way worthy of his people and to give her any help she may need from you. For she has been the benefactor of many people, including me. So he's pointing out this, uh, uh, essentially most believe that she's the one that's bringing the letter to the church in Rome. Uh, you know, she's taking it to them for Paul. And uh, we know of her being talked about in other places, that kind of thing. She's been a benefactor of many people. She's She's been a help in in. Uh, various ways. She's called a deacon, which is essentially a servant, uh, someone that does uh, the work of the church in that way and, and that kind of thing. So she's somebody that's important. So she's been a benefactor of many people, uh, including me. In other words, she's, she's a real helper. Uh, she has a gift of serving. And, and so uh, here she is again. She's serving by taking this letter to the people of Rome. And so then he goes into, after this, he, he goes into a, a group of people that uh, he wants to greet in the church at Rome. These are people that are in Rome. Uh, this first one we know had been there and then left and then come back and, and were good friends of, of uh, Paul's. And so he's, he's uh, probably, this is who Phoebe took the letter to. And then uh, they, they helped get, spread it around. So verse 3, greet Priscilla and Aquila, my co-workers in Christ Jesus. They risk their lives for me, not only I, but all the churches, the Gentiles, are grateful to them. This special couple who uh, evidently did some wonderful things for, for the Lord. Uh, verse 5, greet also the church that meets at their house. Uh, so they evidently, it gives us a little indication of kind of the setup of the early church and homes and that kind of thing. And there was evidently a really important one at Priscilla and Aquila's home. Greet my dear friend Eponidas, who was the first convert to Christ in the province of Asia. Uh, greet Mary, who worked very hard for you. Greet Andronicus and Junia, uh, my fellow Jews who have been in prison with me. Kind of an interesting, uh, you know, he, he knew them from prison. They're outstanding among the apostles. They are in Christ before I was. Uh, in other words, and that word outstanding among the apostles is a little bit of, uh, there, there's some things in them. We're not real sure exactly who they were. The idea, though, is that they were most likely uh, leaders in the early church. In other words, they came to Christ before Paul, which means that they, you know, they were were before him. Uh, obviously, not the twelve, but but maybe sometime in between the twelve and when Paul came uh, to to Jesus has had his encounter, uh, you know, on the road to Damascus. So so this they're very early. They're also Jews who became Christians. Uh, greet Ampliatus. Uh, my dear friend in the Lord, greet Urbanus, our co-worker in Christ, and my dear friend uh, Stock, Stachis. Greet Apellus, whose fidelity to Christ has stood the test. Uh, some things you wonder about, you know, what, what, what did he do to stand the test? Uh, Apellus, you know, his, his fidelity to Christ has stood the test. Evidently, he endured something that just showed his faith in an incredible way. Uh, it's kind of fun to think about. Maybe when we get to heaven, we can track him down and see, see what it was that he did. Greet those who belong to the household of Aristobulus. Uh, some interesting things there. A household of Aristobulus. Maybe he had, had died previous to this, and now it's just his household that's left. Maybe some also believe that maybe he was not a Christian. Maybe he didn't become a Christian, but the rest or most of his household did. And so maybe that's why Paul is greeting the household, not not the individual person. Kind of an inter There's some interesting things you get into some of these 
these lists like this. Greet Herodian, my fellow Jew. I wonder if he was related to Herod. Uh, you know, Herodian, uh, like I said, we don't know a lot about most of these people because most of them are not mentioned in other places in Scripture other than, than right here. Greet those in the household of Narcissus who are in the Lord. Greet Tryphena and Tryphosa, those women who work hard in the Lord. Uh, that's interesting. You know, they, they, don't, they not only work for the Lord, they work hard for the Lord, and that's what they're known for. Uh, you wonder what, what that looked like in their, in their life. Greet my dear friend Persis, another woman who has worked very hard in the Lord. So there's women who work in the Lord, who are going to work hard in the Lord, and then this Persis who works very hard in the Lord. Uh, kind of an interesting uh, <laughs> thing there to think about, you know, what, what separated them in Paul's eyes. It's evidently something. Uh, greet Rufus, chosen in the Lord and his mother, who has been a mother to me too. Uh, evidently, there's a close connection there. Uh, chosen the Lord his, and his mother has been a mother to me too. He, so he has this relationship with, with Rufus, his mother. Greet Asyncritus, uh, Phlegon, Hermes, Petrobus, Hermas, and the other brothers and sisters with them. Greet Philologus, Julia, Nereus, and his sister, and Olympus, and all the Lord's people who are with them. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the churches of Christ uh, send greetings. So in other words, they're greeting all these different people that we've just talked about. Uh, that's who you know Paul wants uh, them to know that the other churches that Paul had visited are, send them their greetings. And uh, then that, that uh, greet one another with a holy kiss, something that uh, we've gotten away, with, away from. Uh, I, I think that's something that, that uh, culturally they did in the early church. Uh, I, I guess at, at some point I remember hearing of a, uh, one of the Roman leaders kind of uh, uh, saying they didn't like the fact that the, the Christians greeted each other with a holy kiss and it was a problem because they it showed that there was questions about them because they greeted each other that way. Uh, you know, kind of an interesting thing. You never know. <laughs> uh, anyway, verse 17. And then Paul kind of breaks into this list and he 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 has some more teaching. It's almost like, which I find is interesting. You know, yesterday in, in chapter 15, at the end there, he, he seemed to wrap everything up. And then it's like he added on these uh, all of this. He, he starts listing these people and talking about them. And then he comes back to some more teaching and just kind of an interesting thing in the way it's put together. It seemed like he was done in chapter 15, but but he had more to say. So verse 17, I urge you, brothers and sisters, to watch out for those who cause divisions and put obstacles in your way that are contrary to the teaching you have learned. Keep away from them, for such people are not serving our Lord Christ, but their own appetites. By smooth talk and flatter, they deceive the minds of naive people. Everyone has heard about your obedience, so I rejoice because of you. So, so basically what he's saying, be careful. And I think that's a good word for us today. Be careful of false teachers. Be careful of those who will lead you astray. And I think that's especially important in this day and age of social media, um, Facebook. On, you know, I, I was looking today. I, I didn't click on it, but I got a thing for a video, and it was talking about Moses. And I, you know, like questioning Moses. And I, I don't know what. I didn't click on it because I didn't want, you know, I didn't want to want to do that. But uh, it was interesting how, I, you know, I, I don't know if they came out supporting uh, who who the Bible tells us that Moses is or not. I, I Like I said, I didn't dive deeper. But but it's the kind of thing that if I clicked on it and, and watched it, 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 it could have, you know, if it's a false teaching, it could lead someone astray. And, I, and that's the kind of thing that happens all the time on you know, when we get on social media, we have to be very careful of it. We talked to, I was about last fall, we talked a lot about wisdom and how, uh, you know, we, we need to be people of wisdom and evaluating, uh, you know, various things that we hear and we take in and, and whether they're true and whether they line up with God's word and, and, and those kinds of things. It's just something we have to be very careful of. And so that's what he's telling uh, the Romans here, you know, kind of wrapping up saying, you know, uh, they they can be pretty effective when you know it says by smooth talk and flatter they deceive the minds of naive people. Uh, they can sound good, and I, I sort of wonder if this thing this link that I I was offered uh, wasn't a little bit of smooth talk and flattery, and uh, you know it'd be easy to de deceive. Uh, so we have to be careful. But he says everything is uh, everyone has heard about your obedience, and so he says. You know, they've been good, and he, he appreciates them, the Romans, 
how obedient they've been. He says, so I rejoice because of you, but I want you to be wise about what is good and innocent about what is evil. So, so know what is good, be wise about what's good, you know, know what's good, know, well, you might say, know the Bible, know God's word, know, know who God is. And if you have that good, firm foundation, you'll, you'll be in good shape. And then he says, be innocent about what's evil. So don't pay attention to that stuff. Don't, don't, you know, be innocent of that. Don't know about that. You know, don't even let it in your mind. Uh, focus on what is good on, on what is godly, that kind of thing. So then God, the God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. The grace of our Lord Jesus be with you. Uh, you know, that's a, that's a good, a good word for us to, to just trust. Okay. God of peace is the closer you get to him, the closer you walk with him, he'll soon crush Satan under your feet. He'll lead you in the way you need to go. And you won't have to worry about, about, uh, the evil that Satan want, might want to bring into your life. The grace of our Lord Jesus be with you. He says, then he says, he, he's, he's now going to talk about some people that are with him. Then he went to want to send their greetings. He says Timothy, my co-worker, sends his greetings to you, as do Lucius, Jason, and Sosipater, uh, my fellow Jews. I, Tertius, who wrote down this letter, greet you in the Lord. And Tertius wrote this for Paul. Paul's dictating it to him. Tertius is his secretary, so to speak. Gaius, whose hospitality I and the whole church here enjoy, send you his sends you his greetings. Erastus, who is the city's director of public works, and our brother Quartus send you their greetings. Uh, so, so, you know, these are who, who's on Paul's end. The other people were who were on those who were receiving the letter in Rome. Uh, in. So then he ends with this, this wonderful benediction. Uh, it's it's uh, uh, some beautiful words here about God and who he is. And, and it's really a prayer. Like I said, it's a benediction. He says, Now to him who is able to establish you in accordance with my gospel, the message I proclaimed about Jesus Christ. In other words, he's, we, we talked about that being one of the keys to the whole book of Romans is, is the gospel, right? The good news about Jesus Christ, about who Jesus is and how he came to, to die in our place for us, for our sins. He says, in keeping with the revelation of the mystery hidden for long ages past, but now revealed and made known through the prophetic writings by the command of the eternal God. So, so it's like now there, there's the Old Testament and all the Old Testament writings. And, and it's, it's like now through Paul, through Jesus, through all the, the, you know, the apostles and those that are now sharing about Jesus. It's not just it, they're, they're showing how Jesus is the fulfillment of the Old Testament of how he he. He says, known through, it was known through the prophetic writings, but, but it's understood now because of Jesus. Uh, all that was written in the Old Testament by the prophets and, and, and all were, were you know, in the law and all of that is, has been revealed, been made known about who God is and how much he loves us. And, and again, how he sent Jesus to die for us. And it's all part of God's, God's plan. And it was sort of a mystery. It was not understood, at least not fully understood. I mean, there were, you know, I think it was, uh, you know, Abraham, it was credit, you know, his faith was credited to him as righteousness and in that kind of thing. But so it wasn't completely hidden, but, but the, it, it for sure has found its fulfillment in Jesus now revealed and made known through the pro prophetic writings by the command of the eternal God so that all the Gentiles might come to the obedience that comes from faith. So now uh, all of us Gentiles are, are brought into the fold. To the only wise God be glory forever through Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, great line there at the end. To the only wise God be glory forever through Jesus Christ. Amen. He knows it all and we can trust him. We can live for him. Uh, he can, you know, he did amazing things. We put our faith in him. He, he gives us his grace. It's a, it's a beautiful thing. Well, let's wrap up with a word of prayer. Lord, we, we thank you for this book of Romans. Thank you for this last chapter uh, and, and what it has for us, Lord. Continue to lead us and guide us and direct us, Lord. Uh, if anyone doesn't know uh, your grace, doesn't know salvation, doesn't know about your righteousness, Lord, help them to turn their heart to you, to put their faith and their trust in in you, in, in the fact that Jesus came and died for their sins, Lord, help them to do that right now. And 
Lord, just uh, be with them and help them. Lord, help us all to, in response to what Jesus did for us, live this this life that is uh, uh, so amazing, this life that is transformed from the way we used to be to, to the way that you made us to be. Lord, we thank you for that and we praise you for that. And Lord, we just ask that you would continue to be near us, to bless us with your presence, to guide us and lead us. Lord, you are good. We love you today. Lord, be with all of those that are hurting today, those that are struggling, those that need encouragement, Lord, those that need a healing touch from you. Lord, we just pray that you would meet every need, that you would just encourage those and, and be very near to them, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your presence. I think of a special unspoken request that uh, uh, right now, and I, I pray that you'd be very, very near to that situation. And Lord, we just ask for, for uh, what, what all is needed there. You know, so we put it in your hands. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' name, we pray and ask all this. Amen. Amen. Well, thanks for watching again today. And uh, we'll be back tomorrow with something else. We'll start something new, a little different probably. But uh, you have a great rest of your day and try, try not to step in too, too many puddles out there. Uh, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.